go ahead and do it. I'll ask the hard questions, or I'll ask myself. That was a threat. I'm a total fraud. I'm fraudulent in every way, and also exactly myself. You might think this is conflicting, but I assure you, as far as I can tell, it's a quite natural way to exist. I'm an amalgamation of the images I see, the things I decide are interesting, etc. And I'm not afraid to steal anything that I find suitable for myself at any given point in time. Again, I hope you feel the same. My hopes are that the sexiness of Visa outweighs its utter terror and unconventionality. My hope is that it makes you feel somehow comfortable with something you never knew you had the capacity to be. Because of this, Visa must remain immoral, locked into a position of a perfect chaotic neutral. It is appropriate that our first event be centered around food, since food is so tied to elements of care, in preparation as well as ingestion. One of the most terrifying things about eating is affirming that one does in fact care to continue to perform and thus becomes empowered and indebted. This week has been chaotic to say the least. In the span of a week and a day, my aunt was confined to a wheelchair, diagnosed with lung cancer, and fell into a coma. I hope this doesn't put too much of a damper on the conversation. My intention is only to be direct when speaking with you. Anyways, my aunt is currently on a respirator, which keeps her vital organs alive until the family decides to, for lack of a better word, flip the switch. Her death has been tentatively scheduled for tomorrow afternoon so that my parents have time to fly to Florida to meet the rest of my family and watch her pass. An act which is hard for me to understand, but I guess if you subscribe to technical terms, it could assuage the feeling of loss to some degree by providing a final image of life. Even if this life is fabricated by a loud clanking machine pumping what appears to be breath into the lungs of a vegetable, I'm sorry my sense of humor is so morose. <laughs> I feel I have adapted to accommodate darkness out of necessity because I want to become nocturnal. Because I want to be nocturnal. I hope you enjoy your meal. I'm able, I'm able to love you by proxy because I'm obsessed with myself. In the coming months, I anticipate becoming so close with you that at points my body may become undistinguishable from yours. I look forward to this and accept the new terms of my body as a bank card would accept the correct pin number even from a thief. Our hope is that this creates a platform by which a flexible constituency can contribute as they see fit, producing a body of organs with no central nervous system to control it. There is strength in the anonymity afforded to the ubiquitous. I think a lot about companies like Sony, Samsung, Magnavox, P&G. They are with a face, in the case of P&G, many, but without a personal identity. Apple is a company that isn't like that. They have a real-life mascot with a real-life personality, even though he's dead now. But I'm interested in the sleek, detached elegance of electronic companies in particular. Sony says we are addressing needs you didn't know you had, but you're going to think you knew you had them all along. Credit card companies work about it differently. 
sidling up to you as a potential customer. We're your friends. We know you are in need and will help you out. Except American Express, which says, We know that you have excellent taste and exhibit fiscal prudence, so next time you want to secretly blow your wad at William Sonoma, we'll pick up the tab for the moment. Also, American Express charges a super high premium to relocation, uh, to, excuse me, to retail locations for processing their transactions on top of the credit processing transaction fee that is inherent of the whole shebang. I emailed you about it before, but now I can't stop thinking about crimes. Committing crimes is an art form, but I don't mean diamond heists, although that's pretty romantic. Hermione and I once day, uh, daydreamed about stealing a car, something really nice, like stealing a Maserati from a showroom. Imagine you're a panopticon rock crashing through the plate glass, we all hop in hot wire it and drive it through the remaining glass, laughing wildly and evading police. I wish we could convince an alcohol company to let us rebrand them, something like vodka. Something that says nightlife, but do it hopper style. You know the painting of the daylit suburbs with the nighttime sky? That would be really funny. Oh, I don't know your password. 7272. Yesterday morning, I easy back in the shower because I stayed up really late the night before doing something that I love. Um, I should rephrase it. Yesterday, I ate easy back in the shower. My approval rating hit rock bottom. That's okay. I'll still model my own underwear for myself. I'll still wash my very own hair and still feel relief from time to time. The only thing I really want from anyone else is to share my sense of humor. It's really nice and equally rare, so I cherish it. Trying to compose a few words to show gratitude and instead I come up with a vitriolic turd cake. Here's the cherry on top. I want you to be my enemy and my accomplice. I want you to be my disgusting lover and my chaste angel. What the hell am I even trying to get out of you? What the hell am I even trying to get out of myself? What is the point I'm trying to make? I'll tell you a brief story. So I have really obviously thrown myself headfirst into what my mom calls the bumpiest fucking road imaginable. And sure, there's a part of me that feels pride for having chosen it. But is that pride a coping mechanism? 
Maybe I'm really dissatisfied with the choices I've made. Xavier, wow, you could be making so much money right now if you just shut the fuck up and did what you were told earlier in life. If your sense of humor and immense ego and probable laziness didn't consume and inform every choice you made. Sure, but also I conveniently believe in fate. Was I fated to a difficult life punctuated by small moments of personal achievement? An ex of mine told me that I was the sort of person that people tolerate and occasionally throw a treat to for a job well done in the face of chosen adversity, but it, that it's all out of pity. God, I hope that isn't true because that's a death sentence for sure. I can't abide people pitying me. So, if you are, I implore you to exit my life as quietly or dramatically as you see fit. This story turned into confessional and not even a story, and it's pretty gross. I'm going to attempt to brighten the mood. What's really key to point out is that all of you are here because you are, like me, and like the people in Visa, so passionate about what you do. Sure, maybe you don't even like what you make, but liking what you do is another death sentence, isn't it? Maybe you're still trying to figure it out. But that effort is really crucial in the formation of a functioning organism. Visa aims to be an organism housed by and hosting other organisms, even if they might be parasitic, or bear with the pun, viral. A good friend of mine who also runs a curatorial project called RK Projects, based in New York City, told me that the word curate's root is in the Latin word cura, which means to care for. This concise definition is beautiful and applicable in its brevity. I only want to care for works. I only want to make works that I care for. And I want to do this for the rest of my life, even if it doesn't make me any money. That said, I want to thank you all for coming. I really hope you enjoy your evening and, above all, we cannot wait to work with you.